Hello everybody and welcome to the very first episode slash video and potentially the only one on this channel which I am temporarily dubbing Michael Makes Things. I am Michael or Legundo if you've known me from most of my other online activities and recently I've wanted to start making things a little bit more physical instead of entirely focusing on digital stuff. I started with a D&D &D table that you can see in the background right there but I built that primarily with the help of my father and I figured I'm gonna have to do this on my own if I want to be doing this full time or doing a lot more things like this. So enter me combining my two favorite things in the world. Well, potential two favorite things in the world. Woodworking and computers. This is the CNC 3018 Woodpecker CNC machine, which will hopefully, theoretically, allow me to do all sorts of woodworking and carving from an online program called Easel, which is by the Inventables Corporation. So we're gonna see how this all works. I'm going to build this thing and put it all together and see if I can assemble it without breaking it. So, montage time. Okay, so progress, or at least partial progress. I got the frame, the first stepper motor installed, and the tray so that if this turns, the actual engine, the plate, moves back and forth because this is one of the CNC's that doesn't move only the head, it moves the head on one axis and then it moves the actual content that you're trying to carve into on another. So that's it for this. It is 12.30 in the morning and I have work tomorrow. Plus I need to make sure that the next episode of Daily Jolt is ready to go. So I'm gonna do that and I will be back at all of this tomorrow. Okay, so day two, just sitting down to continue work on the CNC build and I realized I have a little bit of a problem. See, I have five of these longer aluminum bars and I only have two of the shorter ones. And I was following the instructions where the shorter ones are used as the Y dimension and fit inside the longer ones. And these two really short ones are the verticals, like right there. So once that's up, it'll hold it. But since this is the shorter dimension and this is the longer dimension, I can't fit it inside two vertical bars on the shorter dimension. So looking at the instructions, which are, I'll put them up on screen. Again, not very good. I need to take this entire array and basically start over and take these corners and flip their orientation so that the larger bar is on the interior of the smaller bar. And I need to take the entire tray array and rotate it 90 degrees. So. Blech. So just really reinforce that. So you see how it's currently this way. This is what I oop, this is what I have left to build the arm that goes over top and it doesn't fit because I built the whole thing 90 degrees off of where it actually needs to go. Oh, and this goes in the bottom in the middle as a reinforcement base for the vertical. Oops. And like I said, these instructions are not very good. Small problem, if I were smarter, I would have thought of this. I got the tops of each of these four eyelets for the crossbars all nice and centered and leveled. They're all nice and perfectly level and good to go. The problem is I didn't do the bottoms of all four. And I have to put this little tiny bit of metal inside those railings. This is gonna be complicated.
Yeah, I wasn't kidding. Cynthia just fell asleep over in that room with the machine and everything else and don't want to disturb her because when she's asleep, she's just out and she needs the rest. So one more sleep, one more day, and then we'll finally get our first test carve tomorrow. It's all wired up. All I gotta do is plug it into a computer and hope that the motherboard is actually working. We'll wait and see. Okay, day three of this whole build. The machine is now fully built. I'm prepping for the very first carve. And to do that, I'm gonna need something to carve on, some quick calipers to make sure I get all of the sizes of everything exactly correct so the machine doesn't dig into the aluminum bed, and some finishing supplies for the first thing because the first thing I'm carving is going to be a gift from somebody who made this possible. Since I'm not comfortable filming inside of a random uh, hardware store just yet, this nice, very pretty, smells very nice. Uh, oak hobby board is about, uh, what is it? Quarter inch? Or a quarter inch thick board is going to be turned into a very nice set of coasters. And I bought a set of digital calipers as well. And a couple other small things, some finishing oil, some brushes and stuff like that. So I have to go a little bit more grocery shopping and then back to the house and we get to set up for our very first carve. And now is the moment where we get out of the basement and move into a garage. I have my little workbench area that I'm gonna set up with the router. I honestly don't think there's power under there. So I might have to use this other workspace area, which is here from the previous owner, a bunch of kitchen cabinets. I don't know if that's level. We're gonna have to figure that out too. Also, I really need to figure out the lighting in this room. Oh boy, okay. Now, before we carve all together, we need to know the exact dimensions of this board because it's not inherently guaranteed to be exactly what it says. And this is precise to the millimeter. So I bought these fancy digital calipers, which will track to the millimeter, whatever I press on them. So as soon as I go in and I clamp down tight on the board, it's exactly 6.2 millimeters thick. Now that we know that, we can go in and program our car. Also, I want these coasters to be square, or at least my first carve is going to be square. And to save myself from having to cut all aspects of the board, I'm just taking the width of the board and cutting off that much length. And I don't have a miter saw or a table saw just yet, so I'm gonna be doing this manually. Okay, so I have a coaster clamped down and in place. I have the design loaded over here and ready to go. All I should have to do is click carve. And then uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, measure the material. That's good. Confirm material thickness. Clamp down. Material secure, confirm the bit, which is a super tiny bit that I've installed. Zero the machine, move it to the lower left corner. Almost there. A little bit more. A little bit more. 
One back, and a trick. Sorry, quick reset. A trick I learned for zeroing is to have a little piece of paper here, and as soon as it's pressed down, then, then we are good to go. So we're still in the process of zeroing. There you go. It's in contact pretty much with the wood. It is just short. Now it is actively touching the wood. So now I've honed it to the bottom left hand corner of the wood, which means now confirm home position. I'll raise the bit slightly before you turn on the spindle. Raise the bit. Oh, that is so exciting! Okay, turn spindle on. And carp! Okay, it's going! Oh, it's going! <laughs> I'm so excited! Carb complete. Not so great. Huh. Well, damn. I'll move this. We snapped the bit. Snapped right off. So I'm going to have to try a different bit. Okay, so I'm an idiot. The spindle setting was set to manual and I'm wondering, wow, that's really, really quiet. The spindle didn't even start and I got so excited. I got overly excited that it was working. It wasn't actually spinning the bit, so it just tensioned right off. It wasn't carving anything. So reset, do over. I unfortunately broke my smallest bit, so now we have to step to the next bit size up and I will learn from my mistakes. Hey, that actually sounds like it's doing something. Okay, before we go any further, eye protection. Carve! Go! It's working! <laughs> oh, I'm so excited! So, this is a five minute carve, time for the glamour shots. God, after taking these off, the entire world seems more red because of everything that this filters out. So, uh, time to, how did your car go? I'll tell you in a second. Let's pop off the two holders. There's the whole thing with sawdust and all. And if I just go, boom. Uh, mostly. So let's let's take a look here. Throw the sawdust off. So, looking at the carve, it looks okay. I think I made a couple mistakes. One, I am 90% sure that my workbench is not leveled because this one it carved and this one didn't, and about half of that circle in the middle actually carved, not the whole thing. And you can you can very clearly see the visual differences. Hold on, let me focus in there right here. You very, very clearly see the visual differences between the left and right sides as far as depth. So let me just do this, because I bet, I bet this is gonna come up as not level. And this is my fault. This is something I should have checked. Whoa! Oh, good lord. Check that out. Way off level. I bet you, if I take this carved, carved coaster, wow. 
It was exactly one coaster off of level. So one coaster puts it now into perfect level. So I think, I think what we're gonna do is just carve again. But I think that's gonna be another video. So this, I clearly have a lot to learn from A, making sure the spindle is on, to B, making sure the machine is level before starting, but I'm gonna go kick it to me on the better camera for a quick little wrap up of this whole thing. So overall, this was a really fun project and also the start of something potentially much bigger for myself as somebody being able to make things and potentially start up a shop or multiple shops, depending on which niches I want to get into. I already know I want to do some D&D stuff and some not D&D stuff, so keeping them separate would probably work out really well. But I'm going to be documenting the whole process, and even just what we did with the CNC is just the beginning. I had, actually it's been about a week and a half since then, since I just finished recording everything, probably closer to two weeks now, and I've learned a lot even since then, and a lot of that's going to go into a second part, because this has already gone for way longer than I was expecting it to. And we have so much more that we've learned since then to talk about. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you all enjoy what we're going to be doing here on Michael Makes. And I will see you guys next time.